It can be a lot for parents. One thing that you want to think about is, are you starting new routines? Mm. So a lot of sleep experts say that it takes two to three weeks to get back to a morning wake up. Mm -hmm. So if you have a little more unstructured sleep in time during the summer, you might want to start getting up just an hour earlier for three weeks so that you're back on track by the time that you have to either get them on the bus or get to carpool. Yeah. So that's a good note that, you know, thinking about the transition back to school isn't the week before school starts. It's, you know, when the back to school ads start in July, you should really start (laughs) thinking about what it looks like to have that schedule set up. Mm -hmm. So what about back to school is so challenging for kids and adults? Well, back to school can be challenging because there's going to be a new routine, mm-hmm. a new schedule. There's going to be transportation to and from whatever learning they're doing. Um, there's going to be a lot more kids, a lot more social opportunities, and there's going to be some transitions that mm-hmm. we'll need to make from one classroom to another, or one room or one car to another. Um, and all of that takes a little bit of practice. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of a sense of like change and unknown. Yes. Okay. And for kids with neurodivergence like autism spectrum disorders, it can be extra hard, right? Yes. One of the diagnostic criteria for autism is that there's a rigidity in some of our learners where they really like routine Mm -hmm. and repetition. um, And we want them to feel prepared and not just oh, this is something that happened out of the blue. Mm -hmm. So one thing we do is we tell parents, let's start practicing early. So if you can go on a tour of the school, if you can look at what the playground looks like and the sidewalk, go ahead and follow that route that you're going to take that first week of school, if you're going to do it in the car Mm -hmm. or if you're going to show them where the bus stop is and also just the end of the day routine Mm -hmm. because that's really important to know. Mm Mm-hmm. And I imagine for kids who really thrive with an expected routine, Mm -hmm. after a day of a little bit of maybe chaos and not really feeling like you know what's coming next to come home and know exactly what to expect, there's probably a sense of comfort in that. Yes. So one of the tips that I put on the tip sheet is to set up a little homework station. Okay. So that when kids come home, they know exactly where they can get pens and pencils, uh, dry erase markers, whiteboards, whatever they need to work on. Mm -hmm. And if they um, know where that is, they can put all their school notices there. That can just be like your drop zone and your pickup zone for packing the backpack and unpacking the backpack. Oh, that's cool. To make it easy for you, as I mean, for as a parent, that you know all of the school stuff is here, but then your kid also yeah. can know that if I need something school-related, it's all here and give us a sense right. of familiarity. It's just one spot for the whole family so you know, okay, all the permission slips, all the informational lists, they'll be over there, but mm-hmm. also all the supplies that we need for whatever we're working on. Yeah, that's great. I love that idea. And, you know, just building it together as a family mm-hmm. is helpful. So... Times of big transition, like summer ending and going back to school, can trigger some really big emotions and big behaviors in kids. Are there things adults should be looking for that might indicate a kid is really struggling? Sure. So it depends on um, if the learner is highly vocal, low verbal, or if they communicate with maybe a device. Mm -hmm. Um, You might want to prepare their teacher or their classroom for that. And just let them know, we'd like to just introduce the student and let them know the way they communicate. Mm. And that will kind of preempt anything so that people aren't confused that first Mm -hmm. day when the person isn't speaking as much or is doing something that they're not considering that to be out of the norm for them. Sure. Another thing is that I think that the parking lots and the sidewalks are really important to think about. So I would go over the safety rules for those and how you're supposed to walk. There's so many different rules depending on where you're going. So you might have to follow a line for your class. You might have to follow a color. You might have to line up with second grade. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you know what's expected of them and you can practice that. Yeah, that's a great tip, especially for kids who maybe don't, 
pick up on cues from their peers quite as easily mm -hmm. as sometimes kids with autism spectrum disorder do to help them understand the expectations ahead of time so they really can go into school feeling prepared mm -hmm. and not worrying about all of the other things right. with the day. Yeah, it's not an innate ability for our learners with autism to look around and see what everybody else is doing and just copy that. Mm. That imitation isn't something that just comes naturally. Mm -hmm. So you might want to even just talk about that. When you look around the classroom and everybody's getting out their pencil box, that's a cue for you to get out your pencil box. Mm. If everybody's lining up at the door, ready for lunch, look around, start lining up. Yeah, that's great. And I would think to maybe kids who have really big anxiety or social anxiety that takes a lot of energy worrying about, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing next. Where am I supposed to go? Having those things kind of laid out ahead of time puts the kid at ease and allows them to focus a little more during the school day. So I think that's a great reminder that sometimes it's just as simple as walking kids through mm -hmm. what things are going to look like. It's also interesting to go to the back to school night mm -hmm. and just see where do we hang our coat? Where do we put our things? Is your name on your desk? Um, meet a couple people that might be in your class. And then it feels a little more familiar yeah. instead of completely brand new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any other ways that can make this season of transition easier for kids and maybe even for caregivers? Well, I think one thing is communication. Okay. You really want to go over what are their anxieties and fears, mm, or maybe mm -hmm. they haven't even thought about it. So starting this conversation is really good to think about that mm -hmm. and think about what it's going to be like when things change, when the schedule changes and you're with different people during the day. So just starting that conversation and then kind of handling things as they come up. So, for instance, if they're worried about where they get to sit, you can go over, okay, well, your name's on your desk. You're going to sit by Johnny and Tommy. And remember when we went in the room, it was right next to the bookshelf. Mm -hmm. So something that you can kind of reiterate to help people stay calm mm -hmm. and stay on top of what does it look like? What is it going to be like? Mm -hmm. And what about for caregivers? I mean... If it's, if it's a hard season for a kid, it's a hard season for a caregiver, too. What are some ways that they can maybe set themselves up for success or their community can help them? I think preparation is really important. So just taking the time to reset the schedule, to talk about expectations, to go through the different transitions they'll make during the day, whether it's to a bus or a car and then into a classroom, down a hall, Talking about where do you go to the bathroom when you're in that building, if they have any electives like art or uh, gym time, what do we do there, mm -hmm. do you change shoes, just going through those specifics of what that day looks like and making sure that you're prepared. I think that also is just a comfort for families. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you know that your kid is prepared, it puts you a little more at peace. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. What are your top three things that caregivers can do to make this back to school season easier and, dare I say, more enjoyable? <laughs> well, I call them the three S's. Okay. Number one is safety. Okay. So you want to look at the schedule wherever they're going and think about possible safety problems. Mm -hmm. It could be as simple as, do, is their backpack labeled? Is their coat labeled? Do they know which bus to get on? Do mm -hmm. they know what color? Or a lot of buses either have a number or a sticker or a symbol. Do they know where they're going? Do they know the signs that they're going to be looking at? Mm -hmm. That's a really big indicator with those visual cues of how to be safe. Yeah. So I would start talking about signs over the summer. Mm -hmm. You can even just start with like, look, there's a stop sign. Or look, there's the sign for your school. The walk, don't walk signs. Oh, yeah. You can go over any of those. Mm -hmm. And that really helps with the safety. But also practicing. We don't run in the parking lot. Yeah. There are people dropping off carpool. We stay away from the buses until we're called. Mm -hmm. Different rules like that just for safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because those aren't things you, ne you don't have to worry about all the buses at home necessarily. So yeah. it's a new environment. <laughs> And then the second thing is social. I always tell parents to try to practice introductions and mm. greetings and farewells. So you might just start that on a playground or on a play date during the summer and just practice saying like, hi, I'm Tommy. Uh, do you want to play with mm -hmm. me? And have them practice with you at night. Mm -hmm. Or just, um, I'm in Mrs. Wheat's class. My name's Tommy. What class are you in? Mm-hmm. 
Or do you have those same recesses as me? Do you love the monkey bars? Just some sort of conversational skills to introduce yourself. Yeah. But also one thing that we've noticed with our learners is they will just walk away sometimes during a conversation. Oh, okay. They don't quite understand the conversational norms. Mm -hmm. So also farewells are really important. Mm -hmm. So just giving that bye, even if it's abrupt, kind of helps them okay, bye, I'm done talking, mm -hmm. you know, it lets them know that, okay, that was a lot, we're going to take a break, and then yeah. we'll talk later. Yeah, that's great, and I mean, and you're, the friendships and the relationships are such a big part of school, too, mm -hmm. and so setting kids up for success in making friends and feeling like they can have fun at school is really yeah. important. At the Michigan Autism Conference this year, they talked about conversations, Okay, and how our learners can look around for cues to talk about. So if you're wearing like a Minecraft shirt, oh, I love Minecraft too, do you play? You know, just looking at the person and kind of thinking, oh, he's playing with trucks, I love trucks. Mm -hmm. And practicing those kind of conversations to get playing with their friends. That's cool. You have a third S. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I had safety and social. And the last one is definitely sensory issues. Okay. So our learners have a lot of sensory issues. Um, they may be sensitive to loud noises or crowds. So they might want to have some headphones to block some of the noise. Um, they may need something to fidget with, with their fingers, like a little poppet or any sort of fidget toy. They may need to have accommodations when they're touching things in class. They might not want to put their hands in water or Play-Doh mm -hmm. or whatever materials you're working with. And the teachers are well aware of that. There's a lot of accommodations that can be made, but you might have to just speak up from the get-go and just say, you know, my son or daughter doesn't like this shaving cream texture. Can we just use the Play-Doh instead? Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, they get really overwhelmed on field trips. Can they have the noise-canceling headphones? Mm -hmm. And that also will give the parent a sense of comfort, knowing that that was kind of brought up from the beginning and they mm -hmm. know that that's something that the teacher will continue with throughout the year. Mm -hmm. I would think from a teacher perspective, too, it's nice to know those things up front so you can create a welcoming environment for yeah, every student. Absolutely. And that's why the open house is really important. And if you can't go to the back to school open house, I always suggest going and meeting with the teacher, looking at the classroom, bring your child with you so they feel a little prepared. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. How about people who aren't dealing with back to school either? Like they don't have kids in school yet or they're, you know, way past the back to school season or they don't have kids of their own. How can we be supportive for families who are going through this big transition? I think one um, common thing that I hear from a lot of parents, and I know I, I've kind of experienced it myself, is if you have a child that's struggling out in the community, um, that's a time to be supportive and not judgmental. Mm -hmm. You can offer to help somebody. You can offer a compliment goes a long way. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it can be really hard as a parent of any kids with neurodivergence to feel judged in the community. Mm -hmm. So if your child is having a tantrum in the store or if your child is having a really hard time leaving the store, getting back into the car, um, just think about the fact that that learner might not be a neurotypical learner mm -hmm. and you know, they might just, they might be too, but just give someone some grace because yeah. they, they need your support instead of your judgment. They're mm -hmm. working really hard to help their child learn and to help their child function in every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like that you said, give your, give them some grace. I think that's an important reminder that you never know what anyone is going through at any given moment. But also I think it's a good reminder to give yourself some grace as a mm -hmm. parent. Nobody is perfect. To give yourself some grace, I think, is an important reminder, too. Yeah, it's really important. One of the other things that I do suggest isn't one of the three S's, but it's just practicing those transitions. Mm -hmm. So one thing you can do at home is set a timer with your kiddo mm -hmm. and just say, OK, we're going to do some art for 20 minutes. And when the timer goes off, we're going to clean up or we're going to play with trucks for 20 minutes. When that timer goes off, um, we're going to get our shoes on and go for a walk. That way, those transitions are starting to be practiced before they're happening in mm -hmm. the classroom. Mm -hmm. And then it also is in a setting that maybe is more familiar and with mm -hmm. an activity that's more fun to them, so it's not quite as jarring. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, you can see, how long does it take my child to move from one activity to another? Mm. Is this an area that they really excel at? Yeah. Or is this something they need more practice with? 
Yeah, that's a great idea. This was such a great conversation, Katrina. I'm so glad we could have this coffee break conversation today. For more information about Wedgwood Christian Services, our Autism Center for Child Development, or our mental health support services, head to wedgwood.org or check out the links in the episode description. Stay hopeful, stay helpful, and let's meet for another coffee break soon.